हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम अगेन टू माई चैनल यू आर लिसनिंग दी ऑडियो बुक ऑफ द सी पी सी दी कोड ऑफ सिविल प्रोसीजर्स नाइनटीन जीरो एट आई एम एडवोकेट साधना शुक्ला इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द पार्ट फोर ऑफ द सी पी सी बिफोर दैट आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल एंड प्लीज डू शेयर इट विद अदर्स ऑल्सो थैंक यू वेरी मच शुरू करते हैं पार्ट फोर सूट्स इन पर्टिकुलर केसेस हेडिंग इज सूट्स बाय और अगेंस्ट द गवर्नमेंट और पब्लिक ऑफिसर्स इन देयर ऑफिशियल कैपेसिटी सेक्शन सेवेंटी नाइन सूट्स बाय और अगेंस्ट गवर्नमेंट इन अ सूट बाय और अगेंस्ट द गवर्नमेंट द अथॉरिटी टू बी नेम्ड एज प्लेंटिव और डिफेंडेंट एज द केस मे बी शैल बी ए In the case of a suit by or against the central government, the Union of India, and b, in the case of a suit by or against a state government, the state. Section eighty, notice. Subsection one, save as otherwise provided in subsection two, no suits shall be instituted against the government, including the government of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. or against a public officer in respect of any act purporting to be done by such public officer in his official capacity until the expiration of 2 months next after the notice in writing has been delivered to or left at the office of a in the case of a suit against the central government except where it relates to a railway a secretary to that government b in the case of a suit against the central government where it relates to railway the general manager of that railway b b in the case of a suit against the government of the state of jammu and kashmir the chief secretary to that government or any other officer authorized by that government in this behalf c in the case of a suit against any other state government a secretary to that government or the collector of the district and in the case of a public officer delivered to him or left at his office stating the cause of action the name description and place of residence of the plaintiff and the relief which he claims and the plaint shall contain a statement that such notice has been so delivered or left subsection 2 a suit to obtain an urgent or immediate relief against the government including the government of the state of jammu and kashmir or any public officer in respect of any act purporting to be done by such public officer in his official capacity may be instituted with the leave of the court without serving any notice as required by subsection 1 but the court shall not grant relief in a suit whether interim or otherwise except after giving the government or public officer as the case may be a reasonable opportunity of showing cause in respect of the relief prayed for in the suit provided that the court shall if it is satisfied after hearing the parties that no urgent or immediate relief need be granted in the suit return the plaint for presentation to it after complying with the requirements of subsection 1 subsection 3 no suit instituted against the government or against a public officer in respect of any act purporting to be done by such public officer in his official capacity shall be dismissed merely by reason of any error or defect in the notice referred to in subsection 1 if in such notice a the name description and the residence of the plaintiff had been so given as to enable the appropriate authority or the public officer to identify the person serving the notice and such notice had been delivered or left at the office of the appropriate authority specified in subsection 1 and b the cause of action and the relief claimed by the plaintiff had been substantially indicated section 81 exemption from arrest and personal appearance in a suit instituted against a public officer in respect of any act purporting to be done by him in his official capacity a the defendant shall not be liable to arrest nor his property to attachment 
otherwise than in execution of a decree and b where the court is satisfied that the defendant cannot absent himself from his duty without detriment to the public service it shall exempt him from appearing in person section 82 execution of decree subsection 1 where in a suit by or against the government or by or against a public officer in respect of any act purporting to be done by him in his official capacity a decree is passed against the union of india or a state or as the case may be the public officer such decree shall not be executed except in accordance with the provisions of subsection 2 subsection 2 execution shall not be issued on any such decree unless it remains unsatisfied for a period of 3 months computed from the date of such decree subsection 3 the provisions of subsection 1 and 2 shall apply in relation to an order or award as they apply in relation to a decree if the order or award a is passed or made against the union of india or a state or a public officer in respect of any such act as a force it whether by a court or by any other authority and b is capable of being executed under the provisions of this code or any other law for the time being in force as if it were a decree another heading is suits by aliens or by or against foreign rulers ambassadors and envoys section 83 when aliens may sue alien enemies residing in india with the permission of the central government and alien friends may sue in any court otherwise competent to try the suit as if they were citizens of india but alien enemies residing in india without such permission or residing in a foreign country shall not sue in any such court explanation every person residing in a foreign country the government of which is at war with india and carrying on business in that country without a license in that behalf granted by the central government shall for the purpose of this section be deemed to be an alien enemy residing in a foreign country section 84 when foreign states may sue a foreign state may sue in any competent court provided that the object of the suit is to enforce a private right vested in the ruler of such a state or in any officer of such a state in his public capacity section 85 persons specially appointed by the government to prosecute or defend on behalf of foreign rulers subsection 1 the central government may at the request of the ruler of a foreign state or at the request of any person competent in the opinion of the central government to act on behalf of such ruler by order appoint any persons to prosecute or defend any suit on behalf of such ruler and any person so appointed shall be deemed to be the recognized agents by whom appearances acts and applications under this code may be made or done on behalf of such ruler subsection 2 an appointment under this section may be made for the purpose of a specified suit or of several specified suits or for the purpose of all such suits as it may from time to time be necessary to prosecute or defend on behalf of such ruler subsection 3 a person appointed under this section may authorize or appoint any other persons to make appearances and applications and do acts in any such suit or suits as if he were himself a party thereto section 86 suits against foreign rulers ambassadors and envoys subsection 1 no foreign state may be sued in any court otherwise competent to try the suit except with the consent of the central government certified in writing by a secretary to that government provided that a person may as a tenant of immovable property sue without such consent as aforesaid a foreign state from whom he holds or claims to hold the property subsection 2 such consent may be given with respect to a specified suit or to several specified suits 
or without respect to all sorts of any specified class or classes as may specify in the case of any suit or class of suits the court in which the foreign state may be sued but it shall not be given unless it appears to the central government that the foreign state a has instituted a suit in the court against the person desiring to sue it or b by itself or another trades within the local limits of the jurisdiction of the court or c is in possession of immovable property situate within those limits and is to be sued with reference to such property or for money charged thereon or d has expressly or impliedly waived the privilege accorded to it by this section subsection 3 except with the consent of the central government certified in writing by a secretary to that government no decree shall be executed against the property of any foreign state subsection 4 the preceding provisions of this section shall apply in relation to a any ruler of the state a a any ambassador or envoy of a foreign state b any high commissioner of a commonwealth country and c any such member of the staff of the foreign state or the staff or retinue of the ambassador or the envoy of a foreign state or of the high commissioner of a commonwealth country as the central government may by general or special order certify in this behalf as they apply in relation to a foreign state subsection 5 the following persons shall not be arrested under this code namely a any ruler of a foreign state b any ambassador or envoy of a foreign state c any high commissioner of a commonwealth country d any such member of the staff of the foreign state or the staff or retinue of the ruler ambassador or envoy of the foreign state or of the high commissioner of a commonwealth country as the central government may by general or special order specify in this behalf subsection 6 where a request is made to the central government for the grant of any consent referred to subsection 1 the central government shall before refusing to accede to the request in whole or in part give to the person making the request a reasonable opportunity of being heard section 87 style of foreign rulers as parties to the suits the ruler of a foreign state may sue and shall be sued in the name of his state provided that in giving the consent referred to in section 87 86. the central government may direct that the ruler may be sued in the name of an agent or any other name section 87a definitions of foreign states and rulers subsection 1 in this part a foreign state means any state outside india which has been recognized by the central government and b ruler in relation to a foreign state means the person who is for the time being recognized by the central government to be the head of that state subsection 2 Every court shall take judicial notice of the fact a that a state has or has not been recognized by the central government b that a person has or has not been recognized by the central government to be the head of a state next heading is suits against rulers of former indian states section 87b applications of section 85 and 86 to rulers of former indian states of section 1 in the case of any suit by or against the ruler of any former indian state which is based wholly or in part upon a cause of action which arose before the commencement of the constitution or any proceeding arising out of such suit the provisions of section 85 and subsection 1 and 3 of section 86 shall apply in relation to such ruler as they apply in relation to the ruler of a foreign state subsection 2 in this section a 
former Indian state means any such Indian state as the central government may, by notification in the official gazette, specify for the purposes of this. B. Commencement of the constitution means the 26th day of January 1950. And C. Ruler in relation to a former Indian state has the same meaning as in Article 363 of the Constitution. Next heading is Interpleader. Section 88 Where interpleader suit may be instituted. Where two or more persons claim adversely to one another the same debts, sum of money or other property, movable or immovable, from another person who claims no interest therein other than for charges or costs and who is ready to pay or deliver it to the rightful claimant. Such other person may institute a suit of interpreter against all the claimants for the purpose of obtaining a decision as to the person whom the payment or delivery shall be made and of obtaining indemnity for himself. Provided that where any suit is pending in which the rights of all parties can properly be decided. No such suit of interpleader shall be instituted. So, this is how we have completed the part 4 of the Code of the Civil Procedure. We will meet in the next part. Thank you very much for listening. Do subscribe to my channel. Please do share it with others and please do like my videos. If you have any suggestions or corrections in my pronunciation or in my way of representation please feel free to comment below thank you very much